The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Hi folks, Basil Chapman here. This is the Tiger Technicians Hour, and we're looking at uh, a number of things. I did uh, Tommy uh, Tommy Junior's show the um, his hour. I can't say I did his show. I did his hour nine to ten. Told subscribers that I'd be doing that. So I've already been through a chunk of stuff that I normally would go through. And now I really want to open myself up for, for, for days. I've been saying there are tons of stocks people have asked me about, and I just haven't been able to get to everything. So let me just show you a couple of patterns, and then we'll talk about it. This is the E-mini. This is the S&P uh, June contract trading down 35 at 3894. What I discussed was, and I have a, a number of videos for those of you who are either subscribers, you know that, and for anyone uh, wanting to become a subscriber uh, it's just uh, hours and hours of, of stuff you can listen to about how to draw these these trend lines what it means look yeah it's just so simple you take your trend line you draw it in i i prefer to go to the edges of the the wick edges but if it just touches the body of a of, of a um the body of a candle I use candlesticks because they give you the candles give you so much information and it also spreads it out a little bit more so you can see the charts. But the information within it, I I look at bar charts and I think, wow, I'm really missing a lot. But in the Chapman Wave methodology, you only need bar charts because you only need the highs and lows because you're counting the peaks and troughs. Enough with that. Let me just show you what I am looking at here. So this is a 10 minute chart of the E mini. Uh, I, I have no trades right now, although my bias is to, to think that it's going to bounce after this particular cluster formation testing the trend line th at the bottom here. Look, this is a Chapman Wave inside track mini channel. It makes a larger channel, but it hasn't gone to to the exact highs, but it's gone to the top and it keeps bouncing in like a, in, in a like a tube, a declining tube, maybe declining at about, what, 7%, 5%. Angle down, and every time it gets to the low. And the question I had, I've, I've asked myself for decades, I, and maybe there's a mathematical reason. I've not ever read in Stocks and Commodities magazine, which I get every month. Um, I've never read anything that kind of explains why a trend line is supported so well and how a channel can remain in place for so long. Look at this. This is going from yesterday at about one o'clock. We've been in this trading band with the same price movement, almost the same price movement to the upside. And, and, and then when it comes down, it holds and goes into the Chapman Wave inside track propellant zone. Look, it's holding now. The Magni's turning up. Stochastic's nicely up to the histogram. Um, in the uh, Stochastic is improving. The nine period moving average hasn't crossed positive yet, but it's really close. This is a 10-minute chart. Uh, the on-balance volume, the blue line, made a, 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 right, a higher right side W formation. This looks like it wants to what? It wants to try to test the top side. The only difference is that it's trying at this point to build momentum to break to the upside. My reasoning is that from this moment on, investors, not people out there just listening, but people, investors, with, with feeling just moderately bearish, but they had a little bit of a bias to the upside. So when it went to the upside, uh, let me just check here. Do I have any questions? Oh, yeah, I, I do have a question. When it, it only went that same percentage to the upside, and then it came down and it held the support because the tide was going down. I've got Bill in Montana. Bill, how are you? Hey, good. Good morning, Basil. Good. Now, I'm I, I, looking, when I look at the SLV, um, for years, I've used uh, that any time it goes below 15, be prepared to add a position. Not, uh, It's not such a trader orientation as an investor orientation. Uh, and looking at it again and revising it for time and inflation and so forth, I now think that that's 18. And so I'm looking for... Uh, if a penetration comes below 18, 
somewhere between 17 and 18 to wait for the situation to develop where it looks like it's going to have a uh, you know a positive advance of some meaningful uh, percentage and a couple of things I'm wondering if you do, do you make projections of targets you know I don't hear that so much as your just continuing to monitor and monitor, you know, but uh, what do you think about that general framework? I, I'm not interested in shorting it at all. I believe the downside below 18 is just not worth, you know, having an orientation for uh, uh, anything but being long eventually. So I've got to do two things before I answer the question. Number one is I have to congratulate you first on having a methodology which you've used, and I've got the chart right here. This is the SLV monthly chart. I used to have it totally notated. I just had to do a quick notation because somehow I'd lost some of the SLV. I do have silver, but that's okay. SLV is a silver trust, an iShare, so it's basically trading uh, in proportion to what you would do if you had silver itself. But in the meantime, back at the ranch, what we're really looking at here is that, number one, you have a plan. I love the plan that you're thinking of. And I love the, the second part of that is I love the idea that you have that you want to, over the period of time, there's been a shift and you want to move with the time and you want to get that shift in proportion, meaning that it used to be 15, but other things are telling you that you've got to change your perspective and maybe enter on a higher price. Now, I love that because... I've done, my subscribers know that I, I've done that. I did that with the VIX index. I used to use the VIX index all the time, and there were levels that I looked at. But over the since, since uh, it started to change a little bit with the Great Recession, but it really changed with the COVID, and I've had to look at the numbers of the, of the VIX, the volatility index. I had to change the levels, and that's why I have something that I call the Chapman Wave Trin Gauge, which is really Richard Arms. I have nothing to do with it. It's Richard Arms uh, Short-Term Trading Index. I just use certain numbers within that, and I have a feel. And the reason why I've never given it out publicly is because I know there's going to be a change, and I think the change is getting close to coming, but it hasn't come yet. So that number one, I just wanted to congratulate you because you weren't stuck thinking in a particular way, regardless, you are trying to have some flexibility within the, the, the concreteness of your thinking. Nice. Now, the other thing is, yes, I always have projections. Um, I have projections. I, I mean, I can give you projections right now. I'll show you the silver chart, and I'll, I'll tell you what I've been talking about. Projections are um, looking at previous levels and treating them as support or resistance. So when we were looking at silver before, I said, I wonder if silver is going to make that double top that we've seen historically unbelievable for the last eight months to even a year, maybe even more in so many charts where they make double tops within a dollar or penny sometimes of the previous high. Well, silver in August made a high of 30.49 and then it pulled back sharply to the 22, 21 area, and then it double topped at uh, 30.66. Uh, so, I mean, within less than a dollar. So yes, I do, and now the silver's broken its support level. I'll be back with Bull in a moment. We'll talk about silver. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors.
everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, right, folks, so we're back. So there were a couple of things I was talking about. I was talking about that fantastic double top within a dollar uh, of the left side high back in was it August 7th, uh, the week of the 7th of August 2020, and makes a peak C1, C2, pulls back, and then retests early in, in 2021 within one point, and then has spent the whole period going sideways, even as the dollar was screaming towards its previous uh, major highs. So that, in terms of gold and silver, this is, silver's acting a, a little weaker than gold, but yes. So now this is what I want you to ask you. The question I have for you is, are you in... Do you have a stop on your entry point? Um, well, typically I don't um, on, on so, SLV. So in other if words, I, if I see uh, activity that I that I like or, you know, certain candle volume co combinations and so forth, I just enter uh, like a third position. And I don't put a stop in. I just watch. Okay, I'm getting. That's a, you know. This is. I'm so pleased I spoke to you about this because the way you're handling the whole thing tells me that you have a strategy. I absolutely do not want at all to interfere with your strategy. I love that idea. The fact that you've gone from 15 to 18. Um, just if you had to ask my opinion, I think that I would think 18 was a starter position, but probably the 17s is, to me, you got to be prepared that it can go down to the 17s. That's what I'm saying. So yeah, that's, I, that's, that's what I mean. I, it, if it if it goes down below 18, I think it'll, and this is a, this is a very sharp decline. It's going to take time. This isn't going to, this is not right. a V thing, I don't think. I think I it's going to churn and churn for, uh, Many many weeks, somewhere between seventeen and eighteen, maybe maybe even sixteen, high sixteens. Is, is that's my general you know, vicinities. You know, Bill, I never do this. In fact, I don't think I've ever done it. But I'm going to su su suggest to you that you subscribe to my newsletter with the intention of taking it for a ride. This is not something one should actually uh, promulgate. But I'm going to say with the intention that you're not going to keep it but you just want to get my webinars, 
I discuss exactly what you're doing now. I discuss the rectangle, the large rectangle and the small rectangle pattern. We're in a rectangle pattern in the SI weekly chart. The SL, this is the silver itself weekly chart. I may go to the SLV. I don't think I drew it. No, I didn't draw it in. In the weekly, I'll draw it in right now. And what happens in these long, stretched out, sideways moves, as they get narrower and narrower, because you've used up time, when you go to the top and break out and then come back down and take out the base level, it makes the inside half of that rectangle really strong resistance. Kind of what you're saying now, that even if it does make a little bit of a V, it's probably going to then have to go sideways to bull strength. So I do webinars. So you might just want to do that just to be able to get some of those webinars because um, I discuss it in great detail and it kind of fits your thinking. That's why I'm saying I don't usually do this, but I'm going to, I'm going to mention it now. Now here's the other thing I'm talking about. In terms of, I'm just going to show you the gold in relation to the silver. You see gold was making higher highs and higher lows until today when it pulled uh, yesterday when it pulled back and today's action makes the weekly test this rising mini trend line and it has the pattern that I call an expanding inverted this is the dreaded H upside with a falling X upside down which says now you've got to be careful in gold because it could continue in this arch formation and the right side could be pulling back. That's going to affect your SLV. That's the only reason why I say 18, yeah, but I'd probably be thinking the 17s just because I'm not sure yet how long the dollar is going to hold up. The fact that it went back and made a new high today to me was really important. It says, wow, buying is just coming in. When we finally get a decent rally in the market, will the dollar hold up? I don't know. So I'm going to just, I'm going to say to you, I like your plan with the SLV. If you're able to see my charts right now or go back in the archive, look at them. Look at the difference between gold and silver just in terms of chart patterns. Look at this fantastic double top in gold where it went almost to the left side high of 2020 and then 2022, that was a couple of weeks ago, back on the 8th of August, it went to 208.30. That's the continuous contract, so that price might change. But that was a high. And now it's pulling back more than half of the cup formation. And that's just, mm, you've got to be careful because it could come down further. It could even retest the low. And if I'm looking at Fibonacci numbers, I don't want to use a Fibonacci for this at this particular point, but it could come back and retest. If it doesn't find support next week, then it could come back and retest. No, I think that's a little too far. But that could even be the uh, 1687 level. Now, I'm just thinking 1780 is really the level that I'm looking at for gold. Um, how it tests that is going to be important. So one step at a time. I like your thinking. I like your plan. And in the big context, I think gold and silver, when, when, when they are finished this big decline, I'm watching that because that's going to be key how the dollar acts and how gold acts for some time this summer. Maybe it'll be a little later than the summer. But I am expecting gold to have another big burst for some geopolitical, who knows what it's going to be, but for some reason at some point. So I'm kind yeah, of with you. Absolutely. <clears throat> The other tell, I think, uh, is SIL. The uh, the uh, companies in the SIL, they must not have uh, hedged their production up at at levels they maybe should have, and they have they penetrated quite a bit below their previous cluster of lows. So I I really think Correct. silver will go down below eighteen. So all right, yeah, I do. So with so that, I, I, I'll let you go, Basil. Thanks. You're doing a great job all the time. Thank you. Thank you for calling, and I, I, I love you, Kant. You're, I just It's nice that you've got a, a particular philosophy and you're sticking to it. Congratulations. So, folks, let's go on. We've got the down now. It just went positive. Actually, now it's down three points, and the S&P is up 2.61. That's the reason why I say to subscribers, I know it's difficult. We've had tons of longs. On the, on the long side, we've made money on the long side. We've also lost just a little. And I'm only talking about a few percentage here, a few percentage there. But I do have people that love to trade every day. They get my newsletter because they know that I like to look at the short term as well as we've got the, we've got the dollar long from 2018, April of 2018. We can keep positions for quite a while. We just got out of our agile position after getting in 2020, uh, 2020. Uh, correct? Yeah. 
and um, uh, so and we took huge profits in that. But I gave up some for the very last percentage of the portfolio because I held it too long. But it's given us this big cash position. I think I'm. I, I don't want to talk out of turn. I don't want to sound, I, I get people saying, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, he's always a bull. I'm not always a bull. I mean, who's the one that talked about the Dow right at the top? We, we actually had the DOG for a moment, and then I got taken out, and then I was messing around trying to figure out if it was a peak B in the monthly, and I just I lost my focus to go short the way I normally would do. There were just so many stocks, but we still did pretty nicely. So we've got this cash position. Basically, we've made money because we've got this big cash position. But most importantly, what I wanted to mention is a question came in here um, about the Vixen, V-I-X-N, V-I-X-N, and that is, I'll talk about it as soon as I return. That is the NDX 100 volatility. I'll be right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, the Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Hi, folks. So we're talking about projections. So um, when Bill asked me about, about my projections, I, I make them almost all the time. So what I do is I, in the Chapman Wing methodology, once we get a buy signal to a buy mode, it means it should go to at least four higher peaks. It can go higher, but four is what, that's what you, that completes the action called the buy mode. Then it can go higher, but that's something, that's an extension. So we had a low right here at 940 in the email, around about 380, 3870. We, pulled, we ran up, we pulled back. I said, when I was talking about doing Tommy's show, I said, now we're stuck at the 200 period moving average, and then we started moving up. And then I was talking about, I showed I showed this particular pattern. This is the long a rectangle, sorry, yes, the rectangle, declining rectangle called a channel. And I showed this pattern, I said, okay, this is the lines called the Chapman Wave Inside Track 
propellant zone has to try again to break above the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. And I said, well, we've made a peak E, a D. And just the moment ago, while I was talking to Bill, we made a peak E. The 9 is way above the 14. It's really a positive thing. This is the one-minute chart. I could do the others. I don't have time right now. I wanted to show you that the 10-minute chart, three bars ago, Nine finally crossed over the over the 14, and we spiked above. But this is the first time in um, since late yesterday's trade, midday yesterday. We're almost 12 hours, so 24 hours. So this is going to be a struggle. This orange line at the top here is the 200 period moving average of 39.49. The big next phase now. Now the Dow's down 131 in minutes, 152. I mean, it was up four points just a moment ago. That's the speed that we've got. The sellers keep coming in. They're going to keep thinking they are. Go they have had the winning hand. You've got to look at the tide and say, is it going in or going out? And the tide is going out, and the bears have had the upper hand. I think we are within two days, sorry, three days, of that changing for at least a more sustained move to the upside that could have price or it depends on how it unfolds it could be so quick and, and the the shorts have to come and then all done or i'd prefer if it's slow that there are higher highs now and higher lows and it doesn't look like we're breaking out it keeps coming back but you do a stair step move with each step a little bit higher i'd like that and the only and we've got cash to put to work i in this particular phase now i'm not afraid of putting there are so many stocks that are fantastic stocks I don't mind even getting a partial position, and if they can hold the support after a rally, it gives us a good opportunity to be in early because at some point we will make a pretty – I don't think we're going to make – the way I'm looking at the market now, the way stocks like Salesforce.com and others have come down, I, it just doesn't seem to me like this is the kind of scenario that makes the major top for years. I think we've already done a rotation that says we're almost done with the QQQs. They cannot rally much, but they are done in terms of just being decimated. Now you want to see how the other ones in the Dow, the big caps, uh, are going to hold up. So here we go. We've got questions here. Uh, Jamalai says uh, several, uh, Basel, SLV has several gap down since it's higher, 418. Uh, with the dollar going high, how low do you see the SLV going? The OBV looks oversold. So let me just do that. And I have to congratulate uh, this particular denner will know who I'm speaking about. And they're very modest, so I'm not going to make a big deal out of it. I want to say to this denner, congratulations on Coin, which you went short the day just before the um, announcement that came out of uh, – a little problem with Coinbase uh, Global Inc. cryptocurrency, and that went down from the 60s to the today's low is 40.83. Congratulations, fabulous, absolutely a good, not just a good trade, but you thought it through carefully. I don't know if you're still in it, but congratulations. It's only down to one right now, but it was decimated. So SLV, where where's the price projection to the downside? You see, in this case, I have your broken key support. Now I can look at the left side for key support levels because that's the way markets work. They look, where was the previous support? It's there on paper. You can make it up through Fibonacci and stuff like that, which is fabulous. But at the same time, if there's an empty hole, that's the one. That's why I said to Bill, I don't stick with 18. I think it could still hit the 70s. There's this huge candle, that big gap up, gap up, and then a gap further. And this is the mid candle, huge candle with a low of 1823 and a high of 2153, the week of the 24th of July. That's the area that I'd be looking at. Does it? How does it go to the doji candle, which is absolutely imperative as a halfway marker? key index and icon at 1767 between 1820 and 1740. That's, we'll see. It might stop before then or might go through, but I, that would be my target, the next target on the downside. Next question. Okay, now I want to get to other questions. So yes, BROS. I remember Kramer talking about this. He loved it. His daughter didn't, or somebody introduced him to this coffee thing and they called uh, Dutch Brothers Inc., and the, and and the interview. Oh, I had this written up once. I guess I lost. It. Oh no no, it had a high of eighty one point forty back in uh, the beginning of November. 
Uh, it's trading right now at 21.65. I say 60% decline is quite something, but the most recent high was 65, and now it's gapped down. So what I'm saying is, and, and it sounded like this was a great company, and they were the ones that are just everything sounded wonderful. Uh, but look at the stock. Stock says, no, nope, there's a problem. Uh, down 12.54. Yes, I agree. So this is now at the lowest level it's ever been. I just avoid stocks like this. Don't you remember what we used to have in the den, Goofy Golfer, the late Goofy Golfer, what a wonderful guy. And he used to say, I'll sell you the, the, the metal gloves to catch the falling knife, but only sell one at a time and one day at a time because the, the knife often goes right through. So this is what we're looking at here, falling knife. Uh, next question was the Vixen. So, yeah, we are looking at the Vixen, which is the the, the this is the index 100 volatility index. Hit a high today of 44.02 in leg F. Now, remember, in the Chapman Wave methodology, although I always notated, and it's made a peak D in the uh, 2020 high at that March low that was um, at 84.57. I mean, I, I used to have this notated all the way back to the 1987 crash. But most importantly, um, it has a main leg D in the weekly chart. So I'm, the fact that it's cohering to... Um, the Chapman wave, I'll just stay with the Chapman wave, but normally this can fade at a peak A or a B because it's an emotional volatility index. So I, I don't get too carried away there. But what I am going to get carried away with is this, why does it, why do, remember the, the channel we were looking at and I said this is going to be the resistance that this 10 minute chart, no matter what happens, is too soon to break out. It's going to struggle. Let's see where it is now. Uh, yep, there it is. So you guys, your 10 minute chart, you got that peak E top in the one minute chart, and look, it's struggling. But I think if it holds well, we can have another burst of energy, and then if it goes to, the E-mini goes to 343, all of a sudden the 348, 200 period moving average, which hasn't been hit since it broke down back at about noon, at about this time uh, yesterday, becomes a target. So we'll do one thing at a time. Uh, let's go back to the one thing at a time, which means three things at a time with me. You've got a beautiful cup formation. The reason why I wanted to mention it, how does the chart know that it's going to make slightly lower lows and at a certain point it's going to flatten out and then the it's called the, the Akura. Akura. That is... The, the right side of the, of the quadrant is the quarter part, uh, quotra, quotra. Why am I forgetting it? This is something I just wrote about the other day. Um, this, the, the, the quarter of the semi, the semi circle going to the upside. How does it make, to make higher highs and higher lows? I don't know. This is the market. Isn't it incredible? Just a visual. I'm an artist. So isn't this a visual thing of beauty? Anyway, I'll be back. So the VIX index in the 44s, that says the sunny pressure is on. If it goes to the 36 by Tuesday, we'll see a nice bounce. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Yes, a quick que a quick question about Devin and Jacob. I just posted. Yeah, I'll post it, but I'm also going to talk about it. I've got it in leg D in the monthly chart. Devin and Jacob, EVN trading down 66 cents at 64.02. Uh, it's just a great company. This is a great example of the trap wave cup and ladle breakout pattern going to a leg D and then at some point coming back to retest the 45, in this case, 45, 48 high of uh, 2018. Um, uh, but at this point, at 60 and having hit a high, just about 70. Right now, I've got it as a, an alternate count in the daily because it made a V-shaped pattern, but for three bars, it went over. It didn't close for three bars above peak E high. So I'm suggesting that there's a chance, looking at crude oil and all that, that the oils are going to be in a situation. And that was one of the things I want to look at with other questions that came in are in a consolidation phase. They're not topping per se, not at this moment. When they finally start to pull back much deeper, that's when I think we get the big rally in, in the general market. So Devon at 64.15, if it closes by Tuesday underneath 60, that's a close. It can't just go. It has to close under 60, Tuesday, maybe Wednesday, but I'd say Tuesday. That's such a, suggesting to me together with CVX, CVX um, trading at 161 right now. You see the pattern? It's just in this big rectangle formation, having gone to the double top. How many double tops have we seen? 174.76 in March, 174.54 in April. I mean, what is this? 20, 21 cents for making an all time high? Amazing how it's happened. And it happens so often, and then you pull back. So this is the rectangle gone underneath it now, back into the middle. I just think that Chevron is in the same area. CVS was a question. CVS on the 200-period exponential moving average. CVS Health Corps did a fantastic, almost a double top, uh, going from 130.65 in 2015 July down to 51.77 April 2019. And then what does it go to? Oh, I forgot to put the price in. 113.65 was that high, and this time it went to 111.25. In seven years, it goes down and it comes back and stalls where? I mean, really, within two points of that high. So CVS is another one being fabulous. It's in the kind of defensive area, but it's starting to weaken a little bit. Talking about defensive area, um, LMDLZ is one that I put on our radar as something to watch. Do I want it? Is this going to be where commodity prices really affect Mondelez? I can't get, I don't know what it is. From the moment they changed the name and called it Mondelez, I thought, ugh, what are I don't know what's wrong. Why it's me? It's not them. I just don't seem to um, Mondelez. I don't know why I don't respond to that name. Baby food, coffee, snacks, confectionery. Made a peak D and holding beautifully in the monthly chart. Made a peak D with a V-shaped pattern, 69.47 down to the uh, 
58 area 59 and then zip right back to 66 71 and then stalls i'm watching this is this something that i want to put on my list it's been a great company um lng lng question came in and i don't know what the question was but lng is chenier energy natural gas lng um it went to a peak e did the same double top we've been talking about Oh, I can't believe how many times we've seen these things. And then there's the pullback, and we're in the pullback right now. So I just hold off. I wouldn't say I'd short, not at all. I'd be looking, is this a potential buy? Uh, March of 2022, it goes to 149.42. And in May, it goes to 150 round number high. 150 round, I actually wrote down this morning a whole bunch of round number highs that I forgot to look at. Round, oops, round number high so we we'll monitor this one it's it's acting a little poorly right now just digesting huge gains i, I wouldn't get too carried away but i am calling it a leg f in the monthly chart i i tell you something what if we start to have some resolution to the whole i don't know how they'll do that but you never know markets are strange okay next question came in did that did that did that uh so just maybe I, I signed off before you heard what I said about the VIX index. If the VIX index starts to trade in the 45 and a half to 46 area, those the NASDAQ stocks are just going to have another another big blast to the downside. That could be the, the, the biggest sell off and then the biggest turnaround. But that's what I'm looking at. But if it just gently starts to pull back over the next three days, if it gets to 37 from 41, that's a big deal. If it starts to trade next week at any day next week, if it actually hits 36, I would say to you, be careful about being short because we could see some really big spikes in the, I mean, some of these st stocks, just to get back to where they were a couple of days ago, imagine the percentage gain just to get back to where they were a percent, uh, just, just a little bit, you know, a few days ago. So be careful. So RTX, yes, this is Raytheon. Raytheon is in a sell mode on the 200 period moving average, made a peak D in the daily, a peak E in the weekly, and a leg E, probably a peak E in the monthly. I would love for Raytheon and all those, anything to do with the military, to really collapse from here, and that'll be a good sign about the war. And all I can say is that the key support for uh, Raytheon, uh, this 200 period moving average in the 91 area, is going to be really strong, either both as a magnet if it pops up and keeps coming back or as a uh, as a magnet if it runs down and keeps coming back but if it holds for two out of three sessions below 89.50 raytheon is going even lower if it pops and holds above 94 it's a 91.48 for two or three days in a row i'd say you know what raytheon is going back up next question was um yeah, what about the bank stocks? XLF, uh, when do you think the bank stocks will be ready? I don't know. And that's a big thing. And that's another reason in the S&P Select Financial Spider Fund, peak E with a big pullback under the 14 period moving average. I haven't got a sell signal yet, but there's a sell mode in the in the weekly chart. If you're looking at targets, this is my target. It went way under the double low that was made in the 3450 area. It's trading at 3309. I would look at this and say, this cluster here, right here, this has to be major support uh, for the for the X. I'll, I'll just draw it right across. I don't want to fuss with it right now. Oh, it's already broken. So that says the low of the 20, week of the 26th of March of 33 round number low. If that's taken, if we close under 33 for two out of three weeks this is a weekly chart i can't talk about it in the daily pattern we've got a doji candle right now um that'll be a big negative so keep that in mind next question i had was uh what would you choose uh t for oh oh that's right it did some kind of a split or something telephone they're the notations from up there they don't change automatically i have to do every chart hand chart um would I prefer a, a, a telephone or a v Verizon out of the telecommunications with maybe a dividend? To tell you the truth, I wouldn't choose either at this particular time. I do like Comcast um, just because I have their, their products. And I, I've been satisfied. I know they don't get a great rating for uh, services. But so far, they've been really good. For Not so far. For decades, I've had them for. So, um, or at least 15 years. 
Yeah, I wouldn't choose any of the telecommunications. I just say, you know what? I uh, the competition is so. I, when this month, I'm hoping to make some changes. I don't need to have all this extra stuff. I don't pay for stuff I don't need. I just it, yeah. I might keep all my back as I don't know. It just has my backup, my my um, jetpack. That's all. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. With market volatility roaring back in April, Larry Pesavento has just announced a five-hour live trading webinar coming up on May 17th. Larry Pesavento is a 56-year trading veteran and has mastered his trading skills through many different market fluctuations. Join Larry on May 17th as he hosts a live five-hour trading webinar from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Eastern Time, giving you insight into how he analyzes the market and decides his plays. Larry will delve deep into the ABCD trading pattern, explaining how to structure your trading day, the times most likely to generate signals, which signals to ignore, and how to use the pattern to mitigate risk. In this all-day five-hour live trading webinar, take a seat by Larry's side as he trades the market markets real time, including the Dow and S&P 500 E-mini, crude oil, natural gas, gold, treasury bonds, wheat and soybeans, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar yen, and more. If you've ever wanted to get inside the mind of a market master, you cannot miss this live trading webinar. To sign up today, just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. So we're talking about the E-mini. Look at the E-mini. Look at this beautiful cup pattern. This is a peak A. This is a peak B. If it spikes through here in a leg C and it holds nicely above 3940, um, that's basically saying you've got the Chapman Wave cup and ladle breakout. That's the most fantastic pattern you can ever learn because not a cup and handle. I hate those. Uh, you use other techniques with it, and they, if they work, that's great. But the cup and ladle says you can still go to a leg D. You've got all that strength to the upside. And not only that, remember the channel? I said it takes a little while to retest and then break above. Well, now you've got something else. You've got the nine period over the 14 period in the 10 minute chart. It goes to a leg B above that high right there. And that says that the 200 period moving average, which hasn't been hit for 24 hours, becomes your magnet. And then once you trade above that, that's why I'm saying, that's why I want you for subscribers, just for the traders, to go along this morning again in the diamonds. Um, and we've got very specific levels and levels to, to exit. It's just really important. And by tomorrow, we're going to know do we get a lousy Friday that says, whoa, Monday is going to, oh, Monday you're going to get ready to buy, not to sell, not to sell your portfolio, but to actually buy? Or 
it's just the same old, same old. It's just going to keep going on for a while. And where the bull's out, but the bears are not having their way all the time unless they have positions that they're prepared to hold because they're going to be lower lows. All right, with that said, we're about to wrap up. Now, I did get to a whole bunch of stocks that I, I had listed, but nothing close. Tomorrow is Friday. Usually, I do a technical Friday. Tomorrow, we're going to have the little trading thing going up here, and I'll show you what I love to do. And I will also go through stocks from A to Z, and we'll do them. We'll have a, like a lightning a lightning bolt, a lightning round. Uh, while we're looking at, this is getting very close to going to your leg B in the 10-minute chart. Looking at this, we've broken out. There's your leg. Nope, it isn't a leg C. If we go to leg C nice and sharp, it means you can still go to a leg D before coming back to test 39.41. Hey, have a wonderful day. Check out my open call, my daily newsletter. Been two hours. Need a little bit of a rest. Looking forward to tennis late this afternoon. And hope to see you on the 